Hello friends and welcome to another video. So in this video I want to talk about the overdimensioning of transformers and why it's so important. Just based on a recent experience uh, because I changed out a tube here and um, I changed the 26 for a this one, one of these beauties, very old globe um, type 12A or there it is. And, um, and, and it's not so much that I want to stick with this tube type um, because it has, you know, I, I can see some disadvantages versus the Type 26. However, it taught me a lot of things and uh, I want to share those things and also sort of draw it up to a higher level. Um, why these type of experiences are so instructive and how they were instructive for me. So, so I, I hopefully I can transfer to you a bit of just straight down experience, but also some of the why gaining experience and experimenting is so crucial for you to to find your path and find your direction in in audio because the problem is with the internet is that it holds and, and other videos from, from from other creators is that they hold very good information but when you first hear them you might not always have realized what they were actually telling you and how important it was and what they discovered just because you're not at that level yet and it, as you gain experience, it, you, you'll be able to more um, filter uh, the, the, the wheat from the chaff and, and, and filter what is relevant to you. And then, and then the internet sort of opens up because of all the knowledge that is available there. And now you have the tools, which is experience, to actually um, put, it, um, put it to good use. So I'll use my changes here to... The, um, I'll, I'll tell you what I did, uh, what I discovered, why the overdimensioning of transformers is so important, and uh, what I'm going to do with it as well uh, going forward. So um, yes, let's. So so I changed the tube. I had a, tw a Type 26 in here, and I moved to this tube. Now I noticed three things changing to this tube, and a lot of indirect things that come later. So. Um, First of all, a lot more hum started coming through uh, just at the, at the output. And the reason is, of course, my um, DC, my, my filtering to make this a DC um, uh, supply was actually not that clean. And um, this tube, the, the, the 112 or the 12, the Type 12A, is uh, really for DC, is a DC tube. So it needs 5 volts DC. It's not a AC slash DC tube like the Type 26. So what I noticed immediately is just that the hum rejection is much, much less on this tube. It's just not built for it. Um, so the filament is obviously different. Uh, and despite this being uh, symmetrically fed, it, it, it gave quite a bit of hum. So um, not such a good thing. So I just need to improve my um, uh, DC filament supply, which I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to raise it to another level, probably um, apply filament bias with this tube. And um, I've also got, by the way, some Rod Coleman. Uh, so very, um, you know, well-known, famous, whatever you want to say, uh, you know, broadly used um, voltage regulators, uh, directly current regulators. Um, so those will be, um, that'll be very interesting to see um, how well they perform in my amp compared to what I've got at the moment. So... So that's one thing. So um, number two thing that I noticed is this tube is not as transparent as the Type 26. The Type 26 has a can resolve nuances in the music and just let you. It's a, like a very clear glass. Where I felt with this, it is a little bit. It's not as resolving. It's not as transparent. It's not as the clarity is just a little bit less. Um, now I haven't experimented too much, but um, and it's a slightly smaller plate, uh, maybe um, the dimensions are a little bit smaller than the, the Type 26, so I think those things play into it. Um, otherwise, um, some some people say this is actually a, col a coloring tube. Um, I can't really say it's it's. It, I, I didn't find too too much of a shocking difference between the Type 26 and this one. So. That's it. Number three thing. And then we get into the transformers. Um, much this tube, the vibrancy and uh, 
the energy that was being transferred was on a far higher level. It, the, yeah, the whole amp changed with that. And so just the sheer energy that you feel coming off a band, the, 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 and, it's, and it's not so much slam as it, it is across the range. Um, the, 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 the vitality, if you will, that just some lifelike dynamics or something were much better. And, um, and that got me thinking, because one of the changes, just not just the tube type, is that this tube has a slightly lower plate resistance. So this plate resistance of this one is probably 4700 ohms, uh, maybe 5000 ohms, so the way I use it. And, um, and the type 26 uh, is uh, 7300 um, ohms. So it's slightly lower, but um, normally when you then um, calculate, you know, when, when you do that, um, when you have the plate resistance of the tube and you have the inductance of your interstage transformer, you can actually calculate where the minus 3 dB point is. Now, in case of the Type 26, it was actually, uh, I think, the minus 3 dB point, so where the base is rolled off, the minus 3 dB is at uh, 7 Hertz. So in, in, for many people, that would be extremely acceptable. Like there's a lot of output transformers. If you look at Hashimoto, Tango or so, they usually don't have those type of points. And so you say, so what? But we'll get into that. So um, by moving to the one, the 12, the type 12A, that point moved to 5 hertz. And, um, and so a small difference, sort of maybe 7.5 to 5 or so. So, um, you know, arguably the bass started rolling off a little bit la later. However, I now have to connect this when I had an amorphous uh, output stage um, earlier uh, earlier this year, uh, where I uh, suddenly put four, two, no, two, two P1Ls, uh, for, no, sorry, the four P1L tube, and I two, pull, two in parallel, and had it working together with a, a 26 Henry output transformer, which was an amorphous. And suddenly I felt that the amorphous output uh, transformer, which has a similar minus 3 dB point then with, with having a um, 600, uh, 600 ohm uh, plate resistance output tube, I suddenly felt that it was working, that the energy transferred, the base was there, the, the impact of the base, the heft, the weight, everything started coming in. And so from that, I concluded that with um, amorphous output transformers, you just need to have these overdimensioned or have much lower plate resistances, and then it starts working. But I think now, having this done this, is I'm experienced the same. So even though this goes, so what I'm saying here is, it is not just a minus 3 dB point. If you overdimension the combination of this, it, it, it seems like the the, the power, the impact, the energy, the fatality of the music starts transferring by overdimensioning your interstate. So it is easily being able to handle the, the lowest of frequencies. And maybe it's because it doesn't saturate, but it's not just the bass. It is well beyond the bass. It's across the spectrum it starts changing. And because my experience is so similar, I don't think it's just a tube type. I think it's the combination and the, over the, the relatively overdimensioning of the inductance that you've got working for you and um, the tube's output, um, probably the output resistance of the, uh, of the tube. And that then begs the question to me, immediately flags something, hey, Susuma Sakuma, a very famous uh, Japanese designer, he always talked about that frame of tone and energy, like the, the, the energy of a performance. He said it was not about power, it was about energy. And of course, that's my prime experience was just the energy. And, and, I, and you wonder, hey, Sakuma was always in his power amplifiers, only used power troops, uh, tubes throughout. Even the last stages of his uh, phono pre-amplifiers were always output tubes with very low plate resistances. And he was always raving about the sort of that, that, that energy aspect of the music. So I can't tell, of course, if my experience matches him. But 
I've got here a, a severely over-dimensioned uh, output transformer, 30 watt for a 4 watt tube. Um, this can handle quite easily, um, can handle the DC of the type 46. And this one with this uh, type 12 tube is now also over-dimensioned in, in inductance. And so this one is 168 Henry and that one is um, 81 Henry's and then this one I don't know but it's quite high it's probably I wouldn't be surprised if it's also 80 Henry which is a lot for a 1700 um, ohm uh, plate resistance tube and I can then connect this knowledge this experience and go hey I remember Janos from Real World Audio saying that you need like a 20, 30 watt output transformer for your pure one watt or your quarter, three quarter watt pure dialing, and that will really improve your sound. That's something he discovered there, um, which was new for the pure dialing domain. It's something Janos discovered, and I would say all these things now to me start aligning. It, it, it is a little bit uncanny what you gain by over dimensioning this and you really need it and, and and this gets even worse because if you have a slight bit of roll off of course these things will accum accumulate when you start using interstages everywhere um and it, it becomes really an issue like you, if you if you would have uh, japanese sourced output transformers and then your interstages are also rolling off you're going to have a lot of rolling off but not only that there's there's just this energetic apart from the thing there's just an energetic content that just filters off so what i'm going to do with that well I'm, i seriously need to consider a lower um plate resistance tubes um you know an 801a might also be an option here um, i'll have to think about this a little bit um whether i go an all all out um, power tubes throughout um, over dimensioning that will keep that will definitely um, you know that I'll start introducing it everywhere also on the power side and the choke side and um, yeah much higher quality DC supplies um, so but now the final thing um, just to round this video off and, um, and and draw some extra conclusions as you can see what this has allowed me to do now is is sort of draw some conclusions with my experience with having experimented with you know this this it's not about this tube type i, I discovered a whole other type of thing and it now allows me to d better discern information that i get from janos from the internet things that i read i can have a i have a slightly different perspective on sakuma i'm getting some new ideas i i can have a look on the internet and now go browse through the forums and see which people mimic my experience where which make the same type of choices what what are they saying and so the bullshit filter has improved a lot but it it, it also fine-tuned to, to to i can fine-tune now and i notice people now online they're talking the same language they they they, they use a slightly different vocabulary i can see what they're on about and so that's my final argument really in this video is that there is no replacement for experience um, I hope these videos work and, and 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 sort of you know probably shine a little bit of light uh, light on the path that you can take and if the, the if it's the path that is appropriate you, you know you, you just get to refine it hopefully um, but there is no replacement for experience and uh, for for some things to unlock and for the information on the informa on the internet to become useful for you you need to be able to discern what is relevant to you and and what kind of person is actually um what kind of person is actually talking there so that you have levels of discernment and and, and critical um, experience that can help you to see what what is actually being said so you can filter the information and, and really you start using it without that you're just swimming in the, in the dark like you, you just have no idea where you're floating you have no idea where you're going um, and, 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 and what helps you there is just the experience and then once you found your sources that are reliable then you can go back to the videos like I did I've gone back to Janus's Pure Darling videos and I'm going to use all the techniques that he says are working for him um, because he have, has had a long time experimenting and, and, and his friends as well. 
So I'm going to apply that to my amp and I'm going to apply some of Sakuma's findings. Not all of them because he, he wasn't building hi-fi type um, stereo systems, but I'm going to use as much as I can and, and, see, and, and because there's just something in what I think he discovered that I also uh, I'm, am discovering. So that's really it for this video. I, I hope that sort of makes a bit of sense and, and, and hope it's actually useful. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I, I might try another tube type. I'm definitely, I'm going to have just ordered actually a new filament transformer and a uh, 350 watts filament transformer and a 350 watts uh, power transformer. I've also ordered some uh, higher current chokes. Um, the, 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 the Coleman regulators are coming, two of them, um, which are, are designed to go for the first two stages. And... Um, and I've also got a better interstage coming. Um, so we're, go we're going to sort of level this up. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really sort of now starting to target my final build for a uh, final amp, if you will. And then I can hopefully move over to other things like, a, 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 you know, building a replacement for my phono stage. And, um, and other projects like with my CD player here. Upgrade that. Um, and so I can just sort of leave this uh, behind for a while and then just work with the amplifier and just make the most optimal version. Um, very in the, in, the, in the sense of what Janos did with his Pure Darling. Just bring it at a very high level, this the amp. So those are the plans. Those are the experiences. Um, all the little things. Well, yeah, I'm going to try some other tube types and rectifiers as well. So lots of things to try. Um, but anyway, in the, I'll update you as I go. And um, thank you for tuning into my channel. Um, for those of you that have supported me, um, go to buy me a coffee. You can support my channel there. It is much appreciated um, to get a little push in the back um, that way. And um, yes, else. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll generally get back to you in within a day. Um, as I said, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning into the channel. And thank you for all your feedback and discussions online. And I'll hope to catch you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.